Yo, what's cracking, everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here. So, in the past few days, I've been receiving a lot of comments in my videos about Forza Horizon 5, mainly based on what was revealed at E3. Now, many of your comments come as suggestions, observations, to even questions about the upcoming title, and because the cat is out of the bag now, we've had a lot of different media coverage resulting in many information across the interweb. This ranges from official websites like Xbox and Forza, to gaming journalists conducting interviews like IGN all the way to YouTube videos as well. Now, one thing to note is with all the different media coverage, there's not one platform that has all the information or questions answered. So what I've done is try to research as much as possible to fill in the gaps and let you, the awesome viewers, know a little more about what's to come in Forza Horizon 5. Now, I know I don't normally do this early on the video, but I just want to say thank you for all of the recent support on my Forza Horizon 5 videos. You guys are the best, and if you are new to this channel and would like to keep up to date with everything Forza Horizon 5, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's take a look at 8 interesting things that we discovered for Forza Horizon 5. Starting off with number 1, Drone Mode. So, when drone mode was first introduced in Forza Horizon 3, we were pretty stoked about this feature as it gave an opportunity for videographers to capture the Horizon world in a different manner. It was much more useful than photo mode, despite having less control to pan or slide, drone mode allowed live content to be captured. Now, in Horizon 4, accessibility for the drone mode was still the same, press the start button and go down to drone mode and there you go. While with photo mode though, they made a slight change that to transition from gameplay to photo mode, it was made much easier by simply pressing up on the D-pad in Horizon 4. Now in Horizon 5, and some of you caught this, when the Huracan was driving around the small town just right after the McLaren was doing convertible things, the game went to drone mode instantaneously. Now, of course, at this point, we don't know if that will replace the easy access of photo mode or if it could be an extra option. But just know that to activate drone mode, we don't have to go through the start menu anymore. Number two, number plates. Here's another interesting find, and this can be seen by comparing two different footages from the same car. Now, for most who have played Forza Horizon 4, we'll know that license plates come in different sizes. Most notably, we have the small one and the larger one, depending on the vehicle. Now, although you can customize the letters or even remove the entire number plate, the plate itself cannot be changed to a different design. However, in Horizon 5, it looks like there is an option that we can change which number plate we want, and even possibly for a specific car of our choice. Take a look at the gameplay we have from the Evo 10. This license plate is clearly from Forza Horizon 4, and it was showcased multiple times throughout the gameplay reveal, while if we look at the trailer, the Evo 10 has the official Forza Horizon 5 Mexican number plate. Of course, at this stage, we can only speculate how this will be implemented. It could just be some early gameplay that may not make it into the final product, or could we even see Horizon 3's number plate and perhaps those who have played the older titles get a choice to choose which number plate they want to represent? Not exactly sure, but what do you guys think? Number three, map size. Now, I'm sure for most who have gone on the interweb and done a little bit of research about Horizon 5, will know that the map for Mexico will be the largest in its series. Exactly how much larger? Well, for those who don't know, it'll be 1.5 times bigger than the map we got in Horizon 4, according to the interview done by IGN. And here's an interesting comparison made by Texan Fanboy on Twitter, showing just how much larger Horizon 5's map will be. It's nearly twice as large as Horizon 3's map, but because of the diversity that the Australian landscape provided, it felt just as big as Horizon 4's map. Now imagine if Horizon 5 is boasting the most diverse map in its series, how much bigger will this map feel? Number 4, the new Toyota Supra. Now, this one is a little more interesting as none of the trailers or gameplay actually revealed anything about a brand new Toyota. So why am I mentioning this? 
Well, if you watch this video here, which I will put a card up at the top right corner, if you want to check it out after this video, we discovered that the Chevrolet Corvette C8 wasn't just a standard model, but instead rocked a Street Hunter body kit, which of course was founded by popular YouTuber TJ Hunt. Now recently he made a reaction video also showing his love and gratitude towards all of his supporters, and I don't know whether or not he leaked, suggested, or even confirmed that all of the other Street Hunter body kits will be available in Horizon 5, as he did state that all of the files across the entire Street Hunter catalog was sent to the developers. And if we look at what other cars they offer their kits to, there's a Mazda RX-7 FD, and of course, the Mark V Supra. To me, it's most likely we will get all of the Street Hunter body kits in the game, and given as how Toyota returned to the Forza franchise in late 2019, along with the new A90 Supra also appearing in other video games now like Project Cars 3, I'm certain that we will be getting this car in Forza Horizon 5, either at launch or a DLC. Number 5, Convertibles. Alright, so one of the biggest but yet subtle things we noticed from the Horizon 5 gameplay was this McLaren 720S Spider taking its roof down while in free roam. And of course, the community went absolutely ballistic with this feature as we've all been requesting this for years. Now, of course, with cars like the 720S Spider, along with many other convertibles, you can already take its roof off, but only in Forza Vista mode. However, this feature has been in the franchise for over five years. Yes, five years. Since the accidental leak of the developer's build of Forza Horizon 3, some players managed to get their hands on this debugged version, and yes, in free roam, in a convertible, you can take the roof down or put it back up. Now, I don't know why it took Playground Games two titles before implementing it as an actual feature. Perhaps there were some bugs that needed to be sorted out, but nonetheless, I'm glad our request has been granted and seems as though they knew about this request a while ago. Number six, removable panels. So the next two points is purely based on the observations we made from the announcement trailer. And remember, when Playground Games make these trailers, they are using the debugged version of Horizon 5, meaning all of the features are available to them that may not be usable in the consumer's version once it launches, similar to the previous point we made. But one interesting thing that was pointed out was during the off-roading buggy scene, we noticed that the Ford Bronco Concept R had majority of the front panels taken off to showcase the entire engine. Now, I'm not sure if this was just for trailer purposes. Obviously, the new Bronco Concept R has been modelled specifically for Horizon 5. However, the car was parked on a beach and they begin to set off as a convoy. In the next shot, the Bronco concept is back driving with all its panel intact. So I don't know, many of you in the comments section of my videos were saying you can take off the bonnet according to the trailer, but I would hold back on this feature as of now. If you can, that's awesome. If not, honestly, I'm not too bothered either. Number seven, different driving modes. Again, going back to the announcement trailer, we see the Mercedes Project 1 being showcased in a stationary spot somewhere in Mexico, and then all of a sudden the car spoiler gets activated, fins spike up, and there goes the driver's license for six months. Now, this is very interesting as many supercars and hypercars these days have different driving modes that changes the way the car behaves, whether that's by the way it handles to even the way it looks. An example I can think of right off the top of my head is the 2017 Ford GT. In normal mode, the car sits relatively high and the spoiler is hidden. But put on race mode, the car immediately drops a few inches and the spoiler raises. So are we going to be getting that as a feature in Horizon 5? You know, when you are cruising, you can choose between different modes. And this feature became more apparent at the end of the E3 presentation when the Project 1 parked up in the middle of the road, deactivated its race mode where the spoiler and the fins became hidden again and then carried on driving. I don't know, what do you guys think? And lastly, number eight, Super 7 returning. 
So one of the more interesting features we are getting for Horizon 5 is of course Event Labs. According to Playground Games, this is a new toolset that allows you to create your very own races, game modes and gameplay experiences. Now this is interesting and it sounds like what Super 7 was, but better which gave many of us, including myself, the impression that Super 7 will be succeeded by Event Labs. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. According to this post here on their official Facebook page, they said that the Volcano is the highest peak in Horizon 5, not counting if you build a really tall ramp in Super 7. So it seems as though Super 7 will be returning to Horizon 5. Will it be much different to what we had in Horizon 4? I don't exactly know but I'm looking forward to what they will be revealing. So there we have it guys, eight interesting things that we discovered for Forza Horizon 5. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button as that would really help me out. And of course, if you guys would like to see more Forza Horizon 5 content right here on this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.